What's up, everybody? This is Jay from the Jay and Dougie Show. And the show is a Cape Cod. It's the number one reason why you bring your camera everywhere. I don't know. I, it's been a while since I looked at it. So I know. I know. Every, every, every subpopulation has a population estimate. So it's been a while since I looked at it. It's been a little, little while since I looked at it. And some are. In this country, they're either listed as threatened, but then there's, there's the international li you know, listing, and some of them are in there. So they have different subpopulations. You know, there's one beach in uh, Malaysia, which is one of the biggest leatherback testing beaches in the world. There's no leatherbacks anymore. They eat them all. You know, or they died at sea. Yeah. So this is unusual, correct? Uh, this is a, we get one or two a year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And on the Cape, we probably get you know, maybe 12 a year. Yeah. Really? Yeah yeah. 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 But not necessarily in Cape Cod Bay. More frequently along the Sound, uh, Vineyard Sound, Nantucket Sound, Long Island Sound. They're more common uh, south of us where they eat the they eat jellyfish. Uh, and they, they, there's more uh, buoys and uh, lobster pots and uh, conch pots, fish pots for them to get tangled in. So they um, they more likely die there than they do in the bay. But we had one wash up at the Holiday Inn or the, what used to be the Holiday Inn down at the east end of town. Oh, if it's that way, yeah, I'm pointing the wrong way. That was it. Yeah, that was uh, I want to say that was October, uh, mid October last year. Another very fresh specimen. It was, you know, this one is really fresh. It had to have died, you know, somewhere out here in the bay, not very far away. No, these are warm blooded, so water temperature doesn't influence them at all. They, yeah, they're fine. They, they have a body temperature of around 80 degrees. So, uh, they do very, very well. Uh, we think it's a teenager, but we really don't know. It's, it's not very old. It's about 160 centimeters, so it's kind of small. <laughs> what? It feels that small too. I know. Just so we can get some size uh, different, differentiation here. Check this out. Go watch this. Go to uh, where they nest and you're on those beaches at night and you'll see the big females coming out. They may weigh 1,200 pounds. You know, 1,000. They're giant. Trying to get some size. That bird's up from the Antarctic. Right? Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. Has a master's degree, so uh, a, lot of a lot of kids. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. It depends. I mean, there's other ways to get in. You know, get into this and uh, yeah, like get, get involved. Yeah. <laughs> if you're interested in turtles, there's a whole you know group of people that uh, study turtles and are interested in turtles and uh, you know our volunteer. We have about 50 volunteers that help us with uh, cold stun turtles every fall. 
in Cape Cod Bay because they don't get out of the bay in time and the water temperature drops starting in late October, early November. On a windy day like this, sea turtles get washed up on the beaches. So during the daylight hours, we have people walking all of the beaches we think the turtles are going to come in on and then at night we walk the beaches. Last year we picked up uh, close to 200 turtles wow. that were coal stunned and um, you know, it's all done by volunteers. So there's just different levels of involvement that people can get in, involved, you know, get engaged. So we uh, sometimes um, what we do in the, in the fall, we, uh, you know, we, send out a, we, have a, a, we do a lecture in, in early October and we recruit volunteers and then people call us and some of the folks you know, come to the Cape for you know, a week or 10 days and hang out walk beaches for us and help us, uh, you know, they, so a lot of the turtles are alive, so then we have to drive them to Boston, so they volunteer and, you know, we put them in the back of their car and they take, you know, this coal stun turtle to New England Aquarium, they hang out at the aquarium and help, and some of the folks volunteer at the aquarium and help the turtles recover there. So there's a whole network of people that, you know, are engaged in, uh, you know, in turtle work. And you guys have a website or anything? You can get at it through, um, uh, if you Google, uh, uh, sea turtles or uh, leatherbacks, go to our website, uh, wealthfleetbay.org, and look at natural history notes. We have a, a link to sea turtles, and we have um, sea turtles.org, sea turtle sightings.org, and that is a map showing where all the turtles were seen and reported last year. And I think it includes uh, stranded turtles, but we'll, we'll post that. So there's a couple of sites that have a lot of information about sea turtles. There's more and more all the time. The doesn't get much higher, we're not going to I don't know what they have to do. And we have enough. It is a bit downhill. <laughs> yeah. Now they don't have teeth, right? No, no. They have those sort of pitchfork like. Uh, structures that are part of their skull, and that's yeah. for grabbing onto the jellyfish. And, and they, they just slurp them down. They have these big, yeah. powerful throat muscles that, you know, suck down jellyfish. Yeah. And then inside their throat are all these sort of finger-like projections. Yeah. So once the jellyfish starts down, it can't come back up again. Right, okay. Then they have a six-foot-long esophagus that they just pack full of jellyfish. It's crazy. And then they just start digesting them as fast as they can. You know, taking the 2% of protein out of a jellyfish and then excreting the rest. So they don't get stung in the throat or anything? They get stung everywhere, but they, they, their liver is massive. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge liver to detoxify and deal with all of that. Yeah. So their eyes start to get really puffy, but yeah. they're, they can't sting through their skin. This is just too leathery, yeah. but their eyes are pretty vulnerable. And, prob and then probably their throat and face, yeah, yeah. you know, get it, take a little bit of a hit. Yeah. The biggest one I've ever seen was probably around 1,200 pounds, and the biggest one ever re recorded was uh, 2,009 pounds. This one's maybe 500. Thanks for the knowledge, base gentlemen. All right, thank you. Did you see the, uh, this is where we think it was tangled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's not enough to kill them, right. but if they're held underwater, then it would drown. Yeah, too bad. Crazy, right?